Listeners, uh, we're here with a brand new show. I know you're excited. I'm I am excited. super excited about this. So um, we are tentatively calling it Drink Your Own Adventure. It's where Carrie and I read you a choose your own adventure game. Here are the rules. Every time we have to make a choice, you take a sip. Every time you get a bad ending or die, because a lot of choose your own adventure books, bad things happen. Uh, you take a big drink and then we'll choose one extra rule based on what the book is. Like if it's a Goosebumps book, we could choose something like every time a child goes to an unhelpful adult, take a drink. And in addition, we will be drinking a special cocktail based off of the book. And I know I already sort of made a precursor to this, but we're going to be putting up a Patreon in January and we'll put the uh, sort of recipe of how to make what we're drinking on that Patreon. So if you want to figure out like what kind of cool drink, maybe we'll even come up with a special name for it. Um, go over to our Patreon, which isn't up yet, but we'll I'll link it once it is up and go check that out and figure out what cool potentially nasty thing we're drinking. I tested this one. It tastes pretty good. We're ready to go. Let's go. So today for our very first ever episode, Drink Your Own Adventure, we're going to be reading the Choose Your Own Adventure. Oh my God, why is the light like this? The Choose Your Own Adventure classic, Magic of the Unicorn. Whoa, super exciting. I did not read a lot of Choose Your Own Adventure books when I was growing up. It was kind of... They all die. <laughs> the unicorn? Oh, sure. Many, many different ways. So we'll be reading <laughs> through this until we get a good ending. We're going to start. I think every time we hit a choice, we'll switch back and okay. forth. I think that's fair. Um, if you so don't we'll like that, if you have a better idea, please put it below in the comments because we're just kind of doing this off the cuff. So we're, we're going to start the magic of the unicorn. Oh, and I will, I'll show you our drink. So I made this super special unicorn cocktail. Oh my God, why is it so shiny? Stop being so shiny. Well, you know what's interesting? Your drink and my drink aren't the same color, <laughs> but you can't tell it in the video very Yours well. Yours looks a little bit more blue. Mine's more blue. We Yours have more purple. We have a very strong light because it's dark outside because this is November. And it's dark outside already because it's like four o'clock. <laughs> uh, so we have to use some some artificial lights and it's very bright. And I don't like it, but we need it. So you can see us and not just the big bags under our eyes. So enjoy us drinking these very sparkly drinks. Oh God, we're starting with... <laughs> Beware and warning. You can't read it. Beware and warning. This book is different from other books. Oh, I'm sure. You and you alone are in charge of what happens to the story. There are two we'll of us. die often. Us and us alone. There are dangers, choices, adventures, and consequences. You must use all of your numerous talents. Oh, boy. And, must, and much of your enormous intelligence. Oh, boy. The wrong decision could end in disaster, even death, but don't despair. <laughs> Lots of death. At any time, you can go back. Why is it all in caps? You is like capitalized and very intimidating. You can go back and make another choice, alter the path of your story and change its results. The only water supply, the only water supply for your small forest village has become polluted beyond repair. Okay. Now we're already okay. into the story. I was still thinking this was a so, warning. I was very those confused. Those are the words that should be in the back cover of the book. <laughs> Your wise friend, Marie Claire, sends you off. Isn't that a magazine? That's a magazine. Your wise friend and magazine, Marie Claire, <laughs> sends you off with a talisman in hopes that you'll be able to save your village from demise. Is this the village? Are we going to find out that really it was adults all up spoilers for the village? If you haven't seen that movie yet. It's like 2003 or something. 
Can you solve the town riddle and find the sorceress? This is very vague. Uh, even if you find her, will she be able to purify the well? Does a, uni does a unicorn reside in the forest? No. <laughs> it was adults all along. Its horn is said to fix even the worst of ailments, but is it too late to save it? It being the forest, not the unicorn. A fire-breathing dragon, angry warlock, and devilish, devilish duchess all stand in your path. This is a very short book for all of this to be happening. You must muster all of your bravery, quick thinking, and creativity to weave a magical route to safety for your village and yourself. We need to find a route to safety for the village. Is it on wheels? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Okay, so what's our third rule going to be? We're going to take a sip every time we have to make a choice. We're going to take a big drink every time we die or get a bad ending. And then we need a third one. What do you want? What do you want the third rule to be? You you just read the... I am thinking it's like every time that someone doubts the unicorn exists. Every time someone says something doubtful of magic, maybe? Okay. Every time someone doubts magic. You, you know what I mean? Of the... Sure. The... Oh, there, the, don't worry about it. There's the no dragon in the mountains. In the oh, I don't think the unicorn could actually do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That'll Every work. time someone doubts magic, you take a sip. Okay. Page one. Oh, and there's a there's a picture of a well. That is the one thing I do like about this reprint. It's, were there not originally um, sketchy picture? I don't know. There was a few. If you know, if there were pictures before, I don't think there's a lot of them. But if you know for a fact that there were originally pictures, let us know because we're curious. All right. Oh boy. The summer of 1507 is exceptionally dry throughout Flanders. Fires scorch the forests. Crops wither and animals collapse from thirst. Nowhere is the drought as severe as in your own small village. Just last week, when you went to check the dwindling water supply, you discovered a dead rat floating in the well upon which everyone de depended. Since then, the water has been foul and tainted. Yeah, if a Dead. If you let animals die in the well, put a lid on that thing. What did they expect? The barrels of rainwater are nearly empty, and all attempts to dig a new well have yielded nothing but dry earth. One morning, after weeding the field, you inherit. After weeding the field you inherited when your parents died oh. ten years ago, you pay a visit to Marie Claire. She is the oldest person in the village and one of your special friends. That means I have non-special friends. I just don't like how they say that I'm one of your special friends. That's what I just said. Some people might, some people say, this might be the last summer any of us lives to see, you tell her sadly. That's not very cheery. None of the other villages around has enough water to share with us, and it's hopeless to keep trying to dig a new well. I wish there was something I could do about it. Marie Claire looks up from her knitting. You could try to lure a unicorn to the well. Why, the touch of its horn purifies even poison. That doesn't make water, though. <laughs> that, unless it's magic drought, I don't know how that will help. Maybe the unicorn will just spit into the well <laughs> until we have enough water. But Marie Claire, you exclaim, around here, unicorns are rarer than water. I bet it would be easier to find the sorceress than a unicorn. If there's a sorceress, why don't you just ask the <laughs> sorceress to make you some water? You. Purify the water. Oh my god. Cast. <laughs> cast. Cast create water. Cure. Wounds. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea, she replies. <laughs> I'm sure the sorceress knows all about unicorns. That's not what we said at all, Marie Claire. Why don't you look for her? But no one has seen her in years. I still think we need a drink at this point. You remind Marie Claire. The last person who tried to find her never returned. Ah, but you are ten times smarter than anyone who has ever searched for the sorceress. If anyone can find her, it's you. I doubt it. I do not believe you, Marie Claire. The sorceress is killing her, and that's why everyone's dying in this book. <laughs> Although you feel flattered. What did it say before? It said that she was like... Oh no, that was a warlock. Okay. 
That's fine. We're fine. This is fine. Although you feel flattered, you are not sure you were really clever enough. I agree. <laughs> well, I'll give it a try. <laughs> I mean, if we're going to die anyway, we might as well try to find the sorceress, right? I wonder if I still remember the riddle describing the way to the sorceress. Is this right? You take a deep breath and recite. Near a land reserved for woe, in a place that's high but low, watch which way the bat doth go, find me there and I will know. What we need is a riddle to find the unicorn. <laughs> what we need is a riddle to solve the <laughs> riddle. And here's a picture of Marie Claire knitting. She's just like a nice little old lady. I, I, I expected more from a fashion person than that. <laughs> Perfect, says Marie Claire. That does not help us, Marie Claire. As she hands you a glass pendant shaped like a raindrop. Put on my good luck talisman. Use it as, as you need it, my friend. You say goodbye to Marie Claire, then roam the perched fields. We're just wandering around now. After pondering the riddle, you think of two places reserved for woe. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. I, I can think w -O -E. of W-O-E. It's not like a roller coaster. You're like, oh, whoa. How about this town right now? Wouldn't this town be reserved, <laughs> reserved for, for woe? woe? That's not reserved for it. That's just having it. <laughs> Living in woe. Yeah. The sorceress can mean the village graveyard or the small camp outside the village where two men who suffer from leprosy live in gloomy isolation. If you decide to go to the leper camp, go to page eight. Is it really a camp if it's two people? That's like a leper house. A leper duplex. I think it's because it's a tent and a campfire. If you head for the graveyard, turn to page 12. Okay, first off, it's my turn. Yes, and second of all, we have to drink once we make our choice. And I already made my choice. Oh, what, where are we going? Where do you think I want to go? The graveyard. <laughs> Okay, Sprinkles, you need to calm down. So, do you agree with me? Oh, yeah. No, I would totally go for the graveyard. What's the worst that can happen? We all die. Yay! Even though the path to the graveyard is all downhill, isn't that good? You are hot and thirsty by the time you arrive there. You sit at the shade of a drooping tree to cool off. As you watch the parched leaves float to the dusty ground, you consider the next line of the riddle. In a place that's high but low. What can be both high and low? Looking around, you notice that the rolling slopes of the hills along the far side of the graveyard. These seem to be both high and low. But then the church bell rings, stop, striking noon. Turning, you realize the steeple of the church also fits the riddle. The church itself is a low valley, but the steeple towers high above the village. If you walk over to the hills, turn to page 5. If you enter the church, turn to page 16. Well, so what was our full, our full thing was in a place neither high nor low. Oh, that's high but low. Watch which way the bat doth go. So I feel like the church oh, is a I better know. choice then. I definitely want to go to church. Because there are bats that could be living in the belfry. So I, I would say church. I definitely want to go to the church. Okay, so I will take a drink for our church. I already took my drink. I saw. When you go inside the church, Brother Michel looks up from the candelabrum he is polishing. I was just wishing for some company. <laughs> Is he the sorceress? <laughs> what are you up to, my friend? I am looking for the sorceress, you explain your Five, interpretation seven. of the riddle. What? Five, seven? That's what I'm up to. <laughs> that was really bad. <laughs> Brother Michel strokes his chin. I don't believe everyone has... Oh, I don't believe anyone has considered the graveyard or the steeple when figuring out that riddle. Seriously? Those are like the two most obvious things. So you may be on the right track. The next line of the riddle says to watch which way the bat goes, you tell him. Have you ever seen bats here? Plenty, he exclaims. At night they fly around the steeple. 
I've heard them go down to the cellar, too. What? The bats are like, man, let's go for a midnight snack. I didn't know there was a cellar under the church. Oh, there's a crawl space there, but it's too small to be very useful, says Brother Michel. Not only that, it's so infested with spiders that no one dares set foot in it. It would be a clever place for the sorceress to hide. If I had the courage, I'd look there. She's just living in the basement the whole time. <laughs> They're all like, oh no, we have to go through a crawl space to get to her. And she's just in like an underground bunker waiting for the end of the world, eating cans of peaches. <laughs> You are tempted to investigate the cellar, even though you don't like the idea of running into a web full of spiders. Also, you're gonna die soon. Also, that's not a cellar. A crawl space? Yeah, I know. You also remind yourself that the riddle mentions a place that's high but low, and the cellar doesn't fit that description as well as the steeple does. If you want to explore the steeple, turn to page 10. If you think the cellar is a better choice, turn to page 19. It's still not a cellar. Well, but also we need to go how the bats go. And do bats really go into a cellar? Like, I don't feel like that's a real thing. Well, that, if it was a real cellar, he'd go down there all the time. It's not... Yeah, because what did he say? He said it doesn't go down there because he's there's too scared. There's a crawl space there, but it's too small to be very useful. Yeah. We need catacombs. <laughs> Well, there are no catacombs. You can either go to the steeple or the cellar. Well, I'm going to the steeple. Okay. Well, I will take a drink for our choice. Since I dismissed the cellar as even being a thing. Because <laughs> it's not even a cellar, it's a crawl it's space. It's not a cellar, it's a crawl space. So you go to page 10. I am. Stop cheating. I'm not cheating. Stop it. I don't know where 10 is. It's in numerical order. There. Ha! Ha ha! Well, we're very clever. <laughs> Just like Marie Claire said. Will you help me climb up the steeple? You ask Brother Michel. I'll hoist you onto the rafter, but after that you're on your own, he says. I'm afraid to climb that high. Then why don't we choose the steeple? We're an idiot. Brother Michel lifts up you over his head up toward the rafter. You grab the beam. After a few seconds of scrambling, you right yourself on the rafter. What are you going to do next? Calls Brother Michel nervously. Climb up. You look around. See that rope dangling from the church bell? Yeah, wonder what the rope's for. Would you please move it closer so I can grab hold of it and climb all the way to the top of the steeple? I'm going to fall off the bell. He takes hold of the bottom of the rope and carries it towards you. I can't bring it any closer, he says. I'll have to take a leap. Let's hope I can grab that rope. Oh, you God. feel him with more confidence than you actually feel. Here goes. Turn to page 20. You're going to totally die. You didn't die. Oh my god. You hurl your body toward the rope and you miraculously manage to grab it tightly. As you sway from side to side, the clanging bell is almost deafening. Oh no, wails Brother Michelle. Now the whole village will come running to find out why the bell is ringing. <laughs> Just wait till they see I've allowed you to climb over the church. Who cares? Who cares? We're all gonna die, Michelle. Like, you get pay with no it. no attention. A trap door by the base of the bell has swung open, releasing a frightened bat. <laughs> it flutters anxiously around you, then swoops out the window below. What's behind that door up there, you ask? Is that bat is just Michelle? a vampire who's been I stuck no in the idea it was church there, for like a replies. thousand years. In the next line of the riddle, watch which the way the bat doth go springs into your mind. You think you should probably follow the bat out the window, but you're very curious about the trap door. I know which one I'm choosing. Well, you don't get to choose. I know. So, okay, I have questions already, right? So, like... It, the riddle says, watch which way the bat doth go. Was that bat just in there waiting for yes. someone? No, but here's the other thing. That was not one of the options of, you know, at some point in time, these bats have to leave the windows to go eat right? and stuff. Yeah, no, it was just like in there and it's just like, help me. 
Okay, so we're supposed to watch which way the bat goes. So that makes me think we need to follow the bat. I know you want to go down the trap door. Of course I want to go down the damn trap door. But it doesn't make any sense for the riddle. So we're going to follow the bat. Sorry. Maybe we'll die and then you can do that. <laughs> Could you tell me where the bat went? You ask Brother Michel as you climb down. He dashes out and hurries back. It's sitting on the ledge outside the window. It's literally waiting for us. Oh, good. It's very nice of it. It's a very helpful bat. Can I make it my familiar? <laughs> you swing the rope towards the rafter and jump onto the beam. The bell clangs crazily. I'll distract the villagers so they don't scare the bat away, Brother Michel tells you. You thank him. I'm going to lower myself onto the windowsill, then go out on the ledge, you say. Taking a deep breath. We're just Spider-Man now. <laughs> We're just like, whatever. I don't have anything to lose. Jump on the ledge. Uh, taking a deep breath, you step through the window onto the narrow wooden ledge. The sun-scorched wood feels hot on your bare feet. Why are we barefoot? Oh my God. What? It's a poor village of woe. <laughs> We're like, hmm, time to go on a mission to find the sorceress. Better not pack shoes. You flatten your back against the building and try to control the dizziness that threatens to overwhelm you. The bat cocks its head at you expectedly, then flutters along the ledge. You are terrified to take another step. You squeeze your eyes shut, conscious only of the blood pounding in your ears. This book has no idea how bats uh -huh. behave. You finally force yourself to open your eyes. The bat is still waiting. As you edge towards it, an enormous splinter pierces your foot. You know how you stop that? Wearing some freaking shoes. This is not hard. Like, tie a sack around your foot, for frick's sake. Unbearable pain pulses up your leg, filling your entire body. Your leg jerks into the air, and your arms fly out in a desperate attempt to steady yourself. But there is nothing to grab. You scream with horror as you plummet to the ground. When you regain consciousness, a crowd of villagers is gathered around you. You're alive, thank heaven, cries Marie Claire. Yes, but you've broken both your legs, says Brother Michel. You know your search for the sorceress is over. Take a big drink, because so, we died. did you just die via splinter? I died via no shoes, which was not even my choice to make. If I would have known that... I would not have made that choice. Okay. So you're going to page 73 to go down the trap door. I'm going to see what's behind that trap door, you tell Brother Michel. To, I'll keep the villagers outside so they won't distract you, he calls to you. Be careful. The bell <laughs> rings loudly as you climb up the rope. At the top, you crawl through the opening into a small dark compartment. The tiny room is empty, save for a large goblet brimming with a clear, colorless liquid. Let's drink it. I, I also want to point out that that bat specifically waited for us to stab our foot on a splinter. Like, that was the red herringest of bats. Wait. We do drink it. What? Because <laughs> we're so freaking thirsty. It was vodka. <laughs> Hesitantly, you take a sip. Why? That's not a choice. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was a good idea, so you know it's you know it's a good idea that way. When you realize it is fresh, cool water, you take several sizable gulps. You pause for a second and notice the goblet is just as full as it was when you <gasps> first discovered it. Being careful not to drop the glass, you climb down from the steeple. Quite a bit of water spills on the way, but the goblet remains full. You rush outside to show Brother Michel to find the entire village gathered with him. Look what I discovered, you shout. You pass the goblet among the puzzled villagers. They each take a drink and marvel at the endless supply of water. Okay, so I've now solved the problem of the lack of water. <laughs> with a magic goblet. Book over. Yay! Yay! Okay, we haven't found the unicorn. Wait. Is that, no, there's still, there's still more Brother Michelle read. shakes his head with disbelief. My grandmother's great-grandmother told her a saint had blessed our village with a secret treasure, he tells you. So they hid it? And never looked for it. <laughs> and never saw the trap door the bats were coming in and out of. What? All of my life I have tried to figure out what it was. You found it! 
Before you know what is happening, you find yourself on the shoulders of your friends and neighbors. The crowd cheers your cleverness and courage as you march toward their parched fields with the magic goblet. The so, end. So when Marie Claire says that we're exceptionally clever, she just means we looked in a spot. <laughs> we have eyes and we can go places. <coughs> Sorry. Well, I think that means we need to go back to the hills instead of the church. So the church, let's see. The church gave us two endings. We didn't do the cellar. We didn't do the cellar. Okay, do we want to go back to the cellar then? Rewinding to the cellar. Let's go to the cellar, shall okay. we? If you think the cellar is a better choice, go to page 19. Oh boy, that's a picture. <laughs> Ballet dancing into the cellar. <laughs> We're just like, woo! All right, here we go. I'd like to explore the cellar, you tell Brother Michel. He smiles at you and says, let me get you a lantern, then I'll show you the way. He leads to a very far corner of the church where he opens a heavy trap door. How many trap doors are in this church? And why does he not go through any of them? There might be a goblet full of water in there. <laughs> I like how we solve the problem without <laughs> finding a sorceress or a unicorn. There are no stairs, he explains. Since the space is only about three feet high, you'll have to jump down and then crawl. Wish me luck and hope that there are no splinters in there. Uh, you say as you lower yourself through the hole. Yeah, not not very... Would you jump down there? I mean, you would kind of hop down. Yeah. Well, you're, you're small. You're like four oh. feet tall because we're a child. You get down on both hands and knees, take a deep breath, and adjust the lantern. Only then do you see the spiders. Thousands, maybe millions of them, are clustered on the dense veils of cobweb. No wonder he doesn't go down there. I understand now, and I'm sorry, Michelle, for making fun of you, if there are literally millions of spiders. Where do you think he stares the wine? <laughs> Okay, so maybe millions of them are clustered on dense veils of cobwebs that fill the entire space, except for a narrow passageway. Do I just go to the next page? No, we go to page 15. Okay. You shudder with fear, but force yourself to crawl through the tunnel. The lantern casts eerie shadows on the webs. How can you see the webs when there are literally millions of spiders? I ask. The lantern... Oh. That was the same thing I just read. Spiders scurry under your shins and feet and arms and all of you because there are millions of spiders. Strangely enough, you think you hear a faint sound of gurgling water. Just then a bat swoops towards you. Return of the bat. You flatten yourself to the ground and quickly cover your head with your hands. Presumably dropping the lantern. The bat soars over you, then flies straight through the wall of webs, creating a new tunnel. Okay. You shine the light of the lantern into the bat's passageway, but all you can see is blackness. You'd like to follow the bat to see if it leads you to the sorceress, but you also want to find what's making the gurgling noise. The riddle said to follow which way the bat went. And I want to go to the catacombs, so. <laughs> okay, so if you decide to chase the bat, go to page 80 and take a drink. Now I want to make a remix of Return of the Mac, but make it Return of the Bat. Maybe make it Batman themed. <laughs> oh no. As you make your way through the narrow tunnel formed by the bat, the bat formed the tunnel. Yeah, I know, that's a really weird, I guess because- The it, tunnel is now this big. <laughs> I guess because it was like a bunch of cobwebs and so it broke through the cobwebs, making you able to go through that space. I don't know. The bat. Okay, read you out notice loud. the passageway <laughs> slopes deeper into the earth. The space becomes so small that you have to slide slowly along on your stomach. After wiggling for what seems like half a mile. Oh God. This person doesn't know how long things are. Or how many a million spiders is. <laughs> you know you must be far away from the church. Suddenly, thick shrouds of cobwebs block the tunnel ahead. There isn't a trace of the bat. You cover your eyes with one arm and push through the webs with another. When you lower your arms from your face, 
You find you are inches away from the most enormous spider you have ever seen. No. I have seen the spider in Harry Potter. Is it bigger than the spider in Harry Potter? It is e even bigger than a rat. No, it is not bigger <laughs> than a bear. Well, remember, the space is only big enough for, like, four foot you to crawl. So it's it's pretty small. The giant spider, giant spider, brings you on, springs on you, forgetting the low ceiling, forgetting everything except the eight hairy legs clutching your shoulders and face. You bolt upright. Your head smashes against the earth above. Before you know what is happening, the ceiling collapses. You are still locked in the spider's deadly grip. You are buried forever under tons of earth. That night, Brother Michelle summons the courage to look for you, but his search yields no clue to your disappearance. Because Michelle is He not won't even go in! He won't, he won't go down there! We die. To continue down the tunnel. Well, we did the tunnel. Oh, yeah. Oh, to go to go where the water was. Oh, the water. You find water. Spoilers. You find water, and then people pull it out of the the ground. That's not a unicorn. We have not found. So let me remind you oh, we, the name of this book. I want to make something very clear. The the alternate should we you know in scenario where it comes to drinking should be if you find water but you still haven't found the sorcerer the warlock or the unicorn or the duchess <laughs> oh my god that should have been it it'd been like all the ways that we find water <laughs> we don't find who would have known that there were so many ways to find water okay so do we want to go to the leper camp or do we want to go to the hills i say the hills i don't want to go to the leper camp it just doesn't seem like it would be <laughs> handled in a nice way. It just seems so. So where? where are oh my God! There's a unicorn in this book. There is a unicorn somewhere. We haven't found him yet, but we've seen pictures. <laughs> okay, to go to the hills, go to page five. You decide to climb to the top of the highest hill. Once there, you wipe your brow and look around, feeling a little perplexed. We're perplexed easily. By shoes, and bats, and counting, and water, and distance. <laughs> you remind yourself of the next line of the riddle. Watch which way the bat doth go. But there are no bats in sight, which is why we went to the church, where there were tons of bats that tried to murder us. As you pace impatiently, wondering what to do, you come upon a cave opening near the top of the hill. Well, it should have said a place that is a cave, not a place that's both <laughs> high and low. You poke your head inside, but it's too dark to see anything. Hello, hello, you call, but only your own voice echoes back. The cave seems like the perfect place to find a bat. This is why we're the smartest person in the village. <laughs> oh, and maybe even the sorceress as well. She might be living here. I would have been shocked if she was living in the cellar of the church. <laughs> I assume the bat would like fly to show us where she was, not just like, oh yeah, I've been here the whole time. Just like eating canned green beans and <laughs> like packets of astronaut ice cream or something. We still have to try that. <laughs> okay, if you think it's best to watch for a bat before you do anything else, turn to page 24. If you enter the cave to look for a bat, turn to page 33. Okay, which one do you think I'm gonna say? Uh, you're probably going to run in the cave because you don't make <laughs> smart decisions. The cave is so dark you can't see where you're walking. And we don't you have You grope a along slowly. Suddenly you feel a stone wobble beneath your feet. You find yourself plunging from the blackness deep into the earth. 450 years later, a team of geologists discover your skeleton. They spend several days trying to figure out what you were doing in such a deep chasm. Finding but you are unable to reach a conclusion. But they are unable to reach a conclusion. Wait, when, when did they find us? 450 years from now. Oh, okay, the 1900s. Okay. Sweat streams down your face as you wait. Oh, here's my bat. Here's my bat picture. I'm yeah, you guys. my big cat! Bat picture. Look how cute he is. He's just having a great time. Me too. S sweat streams down your face as you wait by the cave. At sunset, you find- we're in a cave, why is sweat- how hot is it? At sunset, you finally spot a bat zigzagging through the air. Instead of flying into the cave beside you, it soars to the side of a hill, 
or you follow it to a second cave you haven't seen before that doesn't have a big hole. You shiver with excitement as you grope your way through the darkness, listening to the sound of beating wings. Suddenly, lightning streaks across your path, striking the ground just inches from your toes. Before you can catch your breath, a second bolt flashes, followed immediately by yet another. I hope this is the sorceress. Your heart is pounding with terror when you hear someone mutter, Magic Mother of Merlin! Where's the thunder? It's Warlock. Who's there? You call nervously. It's going to be something else. It's not going to be the sorceress or a warlock. <laughs> it's going to be the wizard or the, you know, something we're not even looking for. An enormous flash of lightning illuminates the cave, revealing a wizened old woman draped in purple velvet. A visitor, she exclaims. And the next thing you know, daylight has replaced the darkness. Congratulations, she cackles. It's been 261 years since anyone has been able to find me. I hope I didn't scare you, almost murdering you three times with lightning bolts. I was just practicing my storms. For the life of me, I can't get the thunder to work. As you open your mouth to say hello, but instead of your voice, a deep rumble of thunder emerges from the back of your throat. There's the thunder, she shrieks gleefully. You're afraid to open your mouth again. Don't be shy, says the sorceress warmly. I want to know why you've come. Hesitantly, you part your lips a bit. No thunder roars. So you tell the sorceress about the tainted water in your village well. She shakes her head. Sorry to disappoint you, but I can't clear up that mess in your well. Water is not my domain. Hence all the lightning. Never has been, never will be. Why, I can't even create rain to go with my lightning. And now thunder! I would beg to differ that she cannot make thunder if she needs to have a second person to make the thunder and she lives by herself, but all right. Sure, go off, queen. You are, you are undaunted. What about unicorns? Do you know anything about them? You ask the sorceress. I've heard they can purify water. The words have barely left your lips when you see a handsome unicorn stepping lightly around the cave. You reach out to stroke its flank, but the unicorn vanishes abruptly. Okay, here's the picture that I feel like I need to share with you guys. It's just like a random unicorn with like a giant, the world's longest horn. Just an illusion, the sorceress explains. It's as close as I can come to creating a real unicorn, but it's no good for cleaning water. Have you ever seen a real unicorn, you ask? Several times. Oh, everyone just is like, oh yeah, unicorns, they're a real thing. Don't worry about it, <laughs> Carrie's rule. <laughs> Several times, she replies casually. There's a unicorn living right here in the forest. Can you tell me where to find it in the forest? She shakes her head. I'm afraid not. But I should be able to help you in some other way by giving you a big cup of water, apparently, because that's uh, how we solve all these a, problems. A, a goblet that makes <laughs> lots of water, or... This underground spring. <laughs> if you'll excuse me, I'm going to change into something more comfortable. I feel uncomfortable now. I'm, I always think more clearly as the wind. I always think more clearly as the wind. I don't understand this sentence. I'm going to change <sighs> into something more comfortable. I always think more clearly as the wind. What is she going to change into? You watch with astonishment as she flings her purple robe over her shoulder and spins and until vanishes. she seems to be a lavender tornado. The last thing you know, the tornado fades, the cold wind rushes around the cave, howling and shrieking. A violet cloud slowly forms, and from it the sorceress emerges. I've got it! She announces breathlessly. I can cast one of two spells that may help you find the unicorn. I can give you the power to speak with animals. Or I can knit you a golden net for catching magical beasts. We would need to know where the unicorn is to catch the unicorn and she with the cast, magic net. She can't cast two spells? No, just one. If you answer, I want to be able to talk with animals, go to page 45. 
if you say, would you please make me the golden net? Go to page 49. Neither one of those is helpful. No. I would like to state. All right, which one do I do? I don't care. I think, I, I think they're both dumb. I think they're both dumb too. I think speak with animals might be more fun because maybe we'll find some stupid animal and we'll be like, hey, have you seen any unicorns? And they'll be like, no. No. <laughs> ready? Yep, I'm ready. Let's do it. Oh man, how have I drank so much more than you? Look at this. Because you're chugging it. Look at this. This one is mine. Even you can't find the unicorn, you'll have fun talking with other... Even if you can't find the unicorn, you'll have fun talking with other animals. Exactly. Says the sorceress. She scoops a handful of brown flakes from a basket. What is that? Ears and tongues from oh. 12 creatures, she explains. Gross. You look away with disgust as she puts the flakes of a, in a whey bowl and crushes them into powder. Ready? The sorceress carefully no. spoons the powder into each of your ears sure to have you be able to hear what they're saying okay open your mouth now no. don't worry this will dissolve and you won't taste it at all she places a dab under your tongue and you can barely tell it's there Blech. how do i know if it works go ahead and try it she says call my bat bat hey bat you shout feeling a little silly within a bat. second the creature Hello, flutters bat. towards you and squeaks you called Please lead me to the forest. You thank the sorceress, then follow the bat out of the cave and through the hills to the edge of the moonlit forest. There you say goodbye to the bat. Hearing goodbye, a, bat. a rustling in the branches above, you call, oh. Hello! Hello! Unicorn! Oh. Where is my unicorn? Is that a picture of you? Oh, it's you being attacked by an owl. You're too far away for people to see that properly. <laughs> and owl's like, hey, what's going on? Heard you found a million spiders. An owl swoops out of the darkness, startling you as it lands on your shoulder. You must be a friend of the sorceress, said Hoots. <laughs> yes, I am. The well of in my village is tainted, so I'm looking for a unicorn to clean the water. You'll have to decide whether you want just the horn or the unicorn itself, says the owl. Why? This afternoon a warlock cut off the oh. horn of the only unicorn I know. Oh, that's sad. I'm not sure how magical the unicorn is without it, but I'm willing to bet the horn hasn't made the warlock any less wicked. That demon isn't going to be eager to lend you his new treasure, I can lead you to either, but neither one may be useful. Well, that's helpful. I appreciate you, Mr. Owl. Oh boy, a unicorn or its horn. But you know, this is the best part. If you answer, please take me to the unicorn, turn to page 55. If you are determined to get the magic horn from the warlock, turn to page 56. I'm not. No, no. I must the, steal it the, from him. Are you determined to just get a random body or the magic horn? Well, I mean, we could... There's like 10,000 magic creatures in this world. We might be able to fix the unicorn. What is that face? We were eaten by 10,000 spiders. I feel like there's there's <laughs> weirder just, things that could happen. You just said you want to get a zombie unicorn? No, it's not dead if you just chop off the horn. It's like... It, it's like if you were to, I mean, it's like if you chop off a person's dead. finger or something. Theoretically, because it, it says, I'm not sure how magical the unicorn is without it, implying it's still alive. Oh, okay. So we're going to we're gonna try and find the dead. unicorn, because I feel like that will be, I mean, obviously I feel like the warlock is probably the right choice. That's probably like this path. The long one. All right, fine. We'll go for the warlock. I know you want the warlock. <laughs> I want whatever choice makes us oh, die as many times. Makes us die every time. All right. We're going to be jerks. Sorry, everyone. I'm always a jerk. I know. <laughs> All right. It's the magic horn I need, not the rest of the unicorn, you tell the owl. 
I want to meet the warlock. No, I don't. Carrie wants to meet the <laughs> warlock. Follow me. The owl leads you along a dry stream bed where water flowed before the drought. After walking a few miles, you spot the flickering of a campfire. Squinting your eye. It would be really funny if the the warlock is just one of the lepers. <laughs> and he's like, oh, yes, it's me. <laughs> Squinting your eyes, you can just make out a small figure dancing around the flames. Is that the warlock? Lower your voice! Scolds the owl. Why does he sound like that? Why does he speak with long O's? Because he's an owl. He's Is that like the who? Lower your voice. Scolds the owl. He has extraordinary hearing and the sharpest of eyes. When you are finally close enough to get a good look, a tight knot of panic forms in your stomach, really. This is what is forming a tight knot of panic in your stomach. This little old man with a paunch dancing around a campfire. The warlock's eyes glow red in the darkness, and he gleefully howl oh, and his gleeful howls strike terror in your heart. Well, I guess I'll just have to ask if he'll lend me the unicorn horn, you whisper to the owl. This was a terrible idea, Carrie. <laughs> I want to blame this on you. <laughs> Hello! Will you lend me that? Please don't cover me in a million spiders. How many times do I have to tell you? He isn't a kind-hearted soul. He has no heart at all. He's not much taller than me. Maybe I can sneak up on him and wrestle him to the ground. <laughs> this is a terrible plan. I think it's the best plan. Then I can grab the horn and run away before he can stand up. You sound more confident than you really feel. Are you sure? The warlock won't hesitate to use magic to win a battle. If you decide to reason with the warlock, go to page 72. If you think you are strong enough to overpower the warlock, go to page 83. We're not strong enough to overpower the warlock. So, but on the other hand, we do have the element of surprise. Yes, but if he, if as we're running away, he's going to cast a million spiders on us. It's not a I'll ask the warlock to lend me the unicorn horn, you announce. Although you try to sound casual, your hands are trembling. Good luck, says the owl. I'll wait here. You walk closer to the campfire before owl. calling, hello. The warlock abruptly stops dancing as he stares, strides towards you. His glowing red eyes are fixed on Marie Claire's talisman. You slowly extend both hands, palms up, to show you have no weapons. The warlock studies you warily, then shakes your hand. To you try, and try palm not our to talisman. shudder as his hot, blistered hand touches you. Mm -hmm. After describing the danger facing your village, you ask if you if he would lend you the unicorn horn. The warlock laughs sourly. Between the world of angels and the land of demons, there is no one who will ever touch my unicorn horn. Banish that idea from your mind immediately. But a, a sly grin across the Corlock's face. For a certain price, I can concoct a potion to clean your well. I have no money. It's not money I want, the warlock stares intently into the pendant hanging from your neck. Where did you get that? From my, man, my friend, Marie Claire. Give it to me, and, and I'll mix the potion for you. Turn to page 81. I don't like this. You hesitate, but Marie Claire's words use as use it as you need it echo in your mind. You unclasp the charm and give it to the warlock. He returns to his campsite and begins mixing the potion in a goatskin flask. He finally hands it to you and says, Pour this in your well tomorrow night before the moon rises. By the time the moon sets, the water will be pure. Thank you. Hur and you hurry back to the owl and gleefully shout, Let's go! I'm going to save my village. And you do. <laughs> well, he wasn't too bad. All right. Well, we've saved it again, but not with We have now saved the village three, three times, times with no unicorn. With no unicorn. Okay. I told you, the, dr the, uh, the other drink should have been... Save the village without actually succeeding in ever finding the unicorn. Okay, and then if we try to uh, beat the warlock, he will beat us and cast a sleep spell on us. So that's no good. So we did need to go after the unicorn body. Carrie. Okay. The owl flaps its wings. 
to the unicorn. You hurry after the owl, stumbling on roots and thrashing through brambles. I bet shoes would be a real good idea <laughs> right about now. Slow down, you call. I can't see in the dark as well as you can. Human beings, hoots the owl scornfully. Why don't you sleep now and we'll go to the unicorn in the morning? Good idea, you reply. You curl up at the foot of an oak tree and soon drift into a deep and dreamless sleep and get eaten by a bear. When you awake the next morning, the owl is perched on your shoulder. I'm so glad you suggest- oh, this is my voice. I'm so glad you suggested I rest, you say as you stretch your arms. I feel great. Good. Now let's get going. You can eat some berries along the way. I've seen the Hunger Games. That's not what you want to do. The two of you make your way through the sun-streaked forest. Even though the unicorn has lost its horn, you feel certain you'll be able to find a way to clean the well. You're like, what? Maybe the unicorn could tell me where to find another unicorn. One still has its horn, you chatter happily. I bet the unicorn must know all ways of cl to clean the water. You soon reach a small clearing. There, a crowd of wooded animals is gathered around the unicorn who's lying on the ground. Oh no. No, the unicorn is dead. I told you! That's sad. <laughs> all right. Finding a net it is, I guess. I haven't made this kind of a net for a few centuries, the sorceress warns. I hope it works. She what? sprinkles some herbs into a pot over the fire. Blood of a griffin, scales of a dragon. She recites as she continues to add ingredients. Yes, she has it memorized. And, she hasn't made and, it and a centuries. unicorn's eyelash. She stirs the concoction, tosses in some gold powder. The sorceress dips a pair of knitting needles in the simmering potion. Why? To make the net. Oh, that's right. Your eyes widen with amazement as you watch her swiftly knitty, knit a sparkling net. She looks just like Marie Claire. Oh, I want to state for the record. There, she sighs. Now use it carefully. This net can snare any magical creature, not just a unicorn. The sorceress leads you out of her cave. When she sees night has fallen, she says, Are you sure you want to begin your search now? You can come back to the cave with me and get a fresh start in the morning. Thank you for everything, you reply, but I think there's enough moonlight for me to see where I'm going. Because we're dumb. You wave goodbye and set off for the forest. We you are no walking shoes. through the thicket of pines when you realize you forgot to ask the sorceress how to use the net. Oh my god. Should you set a trap with it or try to cast it over the unicorn once you find it? Now, here's the Once thing. again, I would like to state... The only unicorn in the forest is currently no, dead. The only one the owl knows of is currently dead. But I would like to restate for our viewers... That we're supposedly the the most clever person in this our is village. This stupid village. This is a real dumb village. Okay. Okay. Do you want to wait till you see a unicorn and then just like throw it at it, or do you want to like hang it from a tree and I see if like, you can coax one in? I feel like we should wait for a unicorn because otherwise we're gonna get some like chupacabra or <laughs> I know giant magic spider or something <laughs> and be right. like oh no we wasted our magic net because you can't reuse nets not magic ones no oh. all right worst net ever one time use net one time use net i gotta take a drink you walk through the moonlit forest searching for the unicorn finally you become too tired to continue because it's freaking night time <laughs> And we're like 11. You don't know. Maybe the unicorns only come out at night. Maybe. You curl up beneath a pine tree and fall asleep, clutching the golden net tightly. If only we would have waited until morning. <laughs> As you float in and out of your dreams, you sense someone or something watching you. Opening one eye, you see a small white horse sniffing the net. You sit up and the horse skitters back with fear. It's okay, you whisper, holding out your hand. Come here, horse. The animal draws its head up proudly and says softly, Maybe you can't recognize me without my horn, but I'm still a unicorn. I didn't know unicorns could talk, you exclaim. We do many things people don't know about, the unicorn answers. What happened to your horn? Just this morning, a warlock attacked me and cut it off, the unicorn explains sadly. You see, the horn holds my magic. Without it, I'll die by dawn. That's terrible, you cry. 
Could a, could a sorceress save you? Maybe, answers the unicorn. I know one ritual to restore my horn, but I can't perform it myself. Uh, no opposable thumbs, obviously. <laughs> a sorceress might be able to help, but there's so little time. <laughs> because you wanted to sleep. Tell me about this ritual, you urged the unicorn. It's called the Rainbow of Tears. <laughs> really? This is going to end badly. It takes thousands of teardrops under the light of the moon to form the rainbow, says the unicorn, hence Rainbow of Tears. Sure. You want to help the unicorn, but aren't sure whether you should run back for the sorceress or try to think of a way of creating the Rainbow of Tears for yourself. If you decide to ask the sorceress for help, turn to page 78. I just want to step on another sharp object and just like cry a bunch myself. Is that the other option? If you offer to create the rainbow of tears. How did you make a thousand tears? I mean, there were millions of spiders. <laughs> maybe, maybe we just don't know how numbers work. Two eyeballs. I mean, you don't just cry top. one a teardrop each eye. Okay, so do you want to decide to ask the sorceress for help or offer to create the rainbow of tears yourself? Okay, we technically have four, four eyeballs. Yes, two for the unicorn. <laughs> so it's four times... That unicorn's probably ready to cry. Because it, like you and your village, are going to die soon. <laughs> okay, so 78 or 82. I don't know. Let's, let's, let's make a rainbow. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's make a rainbow. You nervously twist the golden net while exclaiming, to, thinking of a solution. Looking down at the net, you exclaim, I've got an idea. No, we don't. Without another word, you race through the forest with the net unfurling like a sail behind you. Stomping your feet and thrashing it past branches, you startle the birds out of the slumber. As they fearfully flutter into the air... Just gonna make all the birds cry. You, their wings tangle in the magic net. It's a magic net. It catches anything. It catches birds. With each bird, it traps the net grows larger until it holds thousands. Exhausted but triumphant, you return to the unicorn, leading an enormous golden cloud of screeching birds. Cry, you shout. Cry for the unicorn and cry for yourselves. Oh, We're she's, becoming the evil warlock. She's awful. One eighteen. You never know whether they understand your plea or if the terror of their entrapment makes the birds weep. You watch in astonishment as the first tiny tears glisten in the eyes of the hummingbirds. As they swallow, sob, the shiny teardrops slide down their long bills of the woodpeckers. It's working, cries the unicorn over the noise of beating wings and piercing cries of the birds. A glorious rainbow arches from the moon to the earth. So the unicorn's horn grows long and lustrous, glowing with a light of its own. When you finally release the birds with, from the golden net, they soar freely through the forest. I owe you my life, the unicorn tells you. How can I repay you? You are so awed by the wonder of the evening that it takes you a moment to speak. For... For me, seeing as the rainbow of tears has been enough, and my village needs your help. Take me there, and I'll do whatever I can, replies the unicorn. The two of you turn towards the sunrise and walk to your village. The end. We did it! We did it. We solved the book. We, we saved the unicorn. We presumably fixed the village. And we got, a picture. we got a picture of a unicorn. We did it! We did it. Yay! Who knows? Because they don't say that... They don't say what happens. <laughs> Presumably that means we won. I think we won. Yeah, because that was the last page. Oh, too. yeah, it was the last page. That was it. We won. Yay! We did it, and we only failed Lots of times. this many times. Oh, God, there's a little thing about what life was like in the early 1500s. Yes. Because that's, <laughs> that's this... what kids really want. <laughs> This book was a documentary about the trials and tribulations <laughs> of people in Belgium. <laughs> people in Belgium trying to find the unicorns to save their water. I mean, maybe. All right. 
Well, that was the end of the very first Drink Your Own Adventure. Yeah. The Magic of the Unicorn. We chose this one because for our very first episode, I feel like we wanted to pick something that would be uh, very on-brand and also exciting for us. Yeah, I know. That's not all of them, though. Oh, my God. So there's there's, <laughs> a, there's an ad for, like, all of the Choose Your Own Adventure books, but there's at least, like, 100 and something, and this one says 40 books. So I think this is all of the reprinted ones from the newer version because the original one had like 115 or something um that was magic of the unicorn magic of the unicorn there were not enough unicorns in there, this book. there was not there, there were probably were almost, some extra unicorns there's almost no unicorns in this book let us know if there's a game book that you want us to do we have a couple chosen for like november and december but we're open to suggestions and let us know if uh, there are specific rules you want to see us drink for. Anything like that, put it in the comments. Let us know what you thought of this and we will see you next time. There's not enough fragile-based books. <laughs>